Five presents The Big Freeze. Ah, uh, what now? That's all, Joe. You can put your shirt on. Okay. I'm no doctor, but I'll bet I know what you found. Tell me. Well, all those times I've been getting dizzy. I, I need glasses, right? Joe, I've known you since you were a kid. How do you want it? With sugar? Uh, bifocals, Doc. Yeah, come on. They'll make me look too old. Hey, yeah, uh, the contacts hurt your eyes like I read about, huh? You don't need glasses, Joe. You need a new heart. You know my partner, Rico? He's got a pair of black glasses. It makes him look like one... What did you say? I've been trying to tell you that you've got only a few months to live. Maybe less. Come on, I like a good joke, but can't you come through with something better? I mean, <laughs> I'm not kidding, Joe. What, Dottie put you up to it? Do you think that your wife and I would... Doc, I feel too good. Besides, I don't have any pains in my left arm or nothing. The symptoms are not predictable. Look at me. No fat. I'm in the prime. I can still do more push-ups than these punk kids half my age. I know. I'm healthy. The dizzy spells, Joe, they were significant. Yeah, but you can fix me, can't you? So you operate, Okay. I'm sorry, Joe. But I've seen it on TV. I even read about it. How you can fix about anything. You, you put in plastic or steel or something. Not in your case. We just don't know enough about the kind of coronary occlusion you have. Oh, never mind. You get the best. The best you hear. Easy now. Take this pill. Maybe I'll take a powder instead. I don't have to take your word for it. You're just one guy and you ain't even a specialist. I want to see somebody else. A big man. Well, that's your privilege, of course. I have a list of cardiologists you can choose from. Oh, no. I'm not falling for that one. So you can call them up in advance? Oh, I know about you guys. The little club you got where you take care of each other. Not me, boy. Not Joe Carter. I'll prove you're a phony who don't know what he's talking about. Okay, so we didn't get the ship until you're on time. You want to make a federal chase? So it's the end of the world, huh? Go ahead, Sloan. Take your lousy business somewhere else. But when you come crawling back, the price is going to be up 10%. Remember. Hi. What's up? I can hear you in my office. No, nothing. Can I talk to a guy on the phone without you listening in? Oh, I couldn't help it the way you were yelling. Look, uh, I can handle things here. Why don't you go home and relax? Oh, tell me what to do, Rico. I own 50% of this business. Just because that creep Sloan has got a big mouth. Is that Sloan who was on? Yeah. He's one of our oldest customers. Not anymore, he ain't. Nobody talks to me like I'm a slob. What are you looking at? You think I got leprosy? Joe. Joe, Joe. Joe, I don't know what's bugging you, but maybe you want to talk it over. Maybe I said something I shouldn't. That's got nothing to do with you. Just stay out of my private life. Then another thing. Don't go calling Dottie. Oh, I never... Can it, Rico? Every time we had an argument, you'd get Dottie into it. All right, Joe, I'll be a little tantrum. But if there's any way I can help... Partner, you can help me by keeping your nose out of my business, and you can start right now by leaving the way you came in. <laughs> Doc, is that you, Doc? This is Joe Carter. Oh, good to hear from you, Joe. Uh, you, uh, you ain't mad? <laughs> what for? Uh, the way I tore you up. You uh, gave me the right dope on my heart. I saw a couple of other guys, and they say the same thing. Come up and see me, Joe. What for? You can't do nothing. You even said so. Before you ran out the other day, I was getting ready to offer you an alternative. Well, what do you mean? There may be a chance. That is, if you want to take a chance. Well, what's to lose? You make game. Right now, I'm listening to any offer. When? I'm cleared away. It's up to you. Well, I'll be right up. But what? No pep talk, Doc. It won't do any good. <laughs> See if I follow you, Doc. You're saying I might get by if I let you freeze me. Like a pork chop. <laughs> well, that's not very scientific, but the principle is correct. What? I don't get it. You freeze me and I'm dead. If I don't let you, my ticket gives out. Either way, little Joe's a stiff. Not quite. Listen to me again and carefully. My field of research is space biology. Now, the day is coming when we'll be trying to reach the distant planets, even beyond. Do you have any idea how long man will have to travel through space to reach, let's say, Jupiter? Uh, how should I know? A couple of weeks at least. More like a couple of years. And a flight outside our galaxy could take hundreds of years. Well, how can we keep a man alive that long? Well, it's impossible. Not anymore. There is a way. 
If we lower the body metabolism to almost zero, if the body needs practically no fuel, if... If, if, what is this, a fairy tale? Hardly. I'm telling you that we can do it now. Congratulations. By using controlled radiation, we can now preserve beef indefinitely. If we combine the same technique with freezing, a man could be kept alive indefinitely. Could be? You mean you ain't ever tried it? Oh, you're out of your mind, Doc. I ain't no side of beef. It'll work. In my lab, you can see dogs and cats and monkeys still alive after three years. I've brought others back to complete activity after the same amount of time. It's your only chance, Joe. Make me into a popsicle? What are you, some kind of nut? Maybe you'll make money off me by charging admission. Oh, come on. I ain't got time to waste hanging around here. Oh, Joe, don't go. Look, I ain't even told Dottie yet she's going to be a widow. That's more important than yakking with you. You can live, I swear it. You're going to give me a guarantee in writing money back? Joe, Dottie loves you. What else is new? She'll wait for you. Not for no hundred years. It won't be long. How do you know? You got or something. We're doing research on your type of heart damage every day, and we're getting closer to the answer. There are new techniques that'll be perfected in a year or so. It's just a question of time. When we're ready, I'll bring you back, repair your heart, and you'll be as good as new. Tell me something. Of course. How come you're so anxious? You're mighty anxious, Doc. A little too much. That's all. What am I to you, a brother or something? Another walking corpse, that's all. I ain't the first one that ever walked into your office. I level with you, Joe. Yeah, I thought you got something up your sleeve. All this talk because you love me, huh? It's really simple. Along with others, I've practically dedicated my life to this technique. And I need a volunteer. Which is me. It's the only way I can prove the technique. It's up to you. Say no, and you're a dead man. Yes? And you have a chance, a real possibility of survival. Doc, if you was me, would you? I'd never hesitate. You ain't me. Is that your final answer? You got it. I've been thinking how to tell you for a whole week. Baby. Baby. Oh, come on, tell me what to do here. I'm scared. Now, you won't leave me, baby. I won't let you. Well, even in high school, everybody knew it was Daddy and Joe. Not going to stop now. Not for all the doctors in the world. Honey, you understand what the score is? I'm boxed in. There's no way out. Hold me, baby. Me tight. Oh, sweetie. Joe. Yeah. I'm going with you. Don't talk like that. Don't ever. Daddy and Joe always together. Remember what they said about us in the yearbook? If you see one, there's the other. Yes, sure, sure, sure. There can't be just one. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. So maybe it's a mistake. Look, maybe your x-rays got mixed up. It happened. Look, honey, we'll go to a real top doctor. It's and no we'll... mistake. He came to me for help, and I can't do anything. Oh, baby, I'd give you my heart if I could even cut it out myself. Look, you'll be okay. The lawyer's got the papers. He'll see you get a fair shake from me. Do you want to hear any more? Honey, suppose I was old and I got news like this. But you're my baby, and you're going to be with me always. You know, it's funny, I bawled out Doc Wheeler when he gave me the straight dope, and now here I'm telling you to take it easy. Call him. Who? Dr. Wheeler. You mean you want me to roll the dice? It's the only way you've got. Okay, if you make me a promise. Anything? You won't do anything you shouldn't. Uh, you know, it, it don't work. I promise. Joe, no act, please. Oh, no, 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 so help me all of a sudden. I know I'm going to make it. And it'll be Dottie and Joe all the way. <laughs> Believe it, Dottie. Believe it. I do. I do. Say when, Doc. Tonight at my office, 7 o'clock. Tonight? 
What's the rush? How about tomorrow? You should know those dizzy spells. You got any more? Uh, just, just a couple of light ones. They're occurring more frequently, aren't they? No. No. When I said you had a few months, that was the limit. But it could happen any moment. Okay, okay, but I... I got a little business I got to take care of first. Look, I'll, I'll be there tonight, but not at 7. Thank it later. How much later? Well, about midnight. Even a little before if I get a break. You get everything ready and I'll be there. Did your wife... I mean, did you... Yeah, yeah, I told Dottie. She wants me to do it. How could I arrange a deal like this and not tell her? Well, I'll get the ice cubes ready. Oh, the, hey, Doc. Yeah? I uh, hope that whatever gimmick you're going to use on me don't have no automatic defrosting. <laughs> explanation for all this. Yeah, relax. You could have come over to my apartment or I could have gone to yours. What about our office? No, we have to meet like a couple of thieves late at night under a bridge. It's a big deal to do a favor for your one and only partner. So I'm a crook. You want to spend the whole night on the subject? You have a fight with Dottie? That's the reason? That's funny you should bring her up. All right. Tell me about it. No, it's not what you think. Rico, I've been reading our agreement. What agreement? The partnership. Something happens to me, Dottie's out in the cold. Ah, oh, you know better than that. Dottie would inherit a 25% interest. Yeah, but no salary. 25% of the profits. Now, suppose you see to it, there ain't no profit. And nobody twisted your arm to sign the deal. If I marry and my wife would be in the same boat. That boat's got holes in it. Why couldn't this wait till tomorrow? I want to settle it now. That's why I got reason. Like what? Never mind. I've told you a hundred times, Dottie wouldn't have to worry. I'd see to that. All I got is your word. Well, it's been good enough up to now. In writing, that's the way I want it. Oh, we'll talk about it in the morning when we're both a little cooler. Now. Look, why don't you bring Dottie with you to the office and we'll talk it over. Now we go. You're crazy. I'm leaving. You ain't going nowhere. Put that knife away. Yeah, sure we go. Sure. Get out of my way. You know where I'm going to put this knife right in your crummy heart. You watch too much television, Joe. You ain't married, so if you get knocked off, the business goes to me, right? And if I kick the bucket, Dottie gets everything. So long, Rico. I never figured this meant so much to me. Suppose we work out on the agreement, okay? If you die and I haven't married, then Dottie gets your full share. If I do get married... It's too late. But isn't that what you want? Yesterday, maybe, not now. And why didn't you say something about this before? I'm through talking. I'll go home and get a good night's sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. Rico? Yes. No, no. What are you? No. Oh. I told you I'd do what I told you. You had to make it rough, didn't you? Why did you have to be such a nice guy, Rico? Why? <laughs> Follow me. I'm afraid I don't. Well, every day now for two years I've watched over him like a mother hen. And you get to know a person just being around. So what do you feel about Joe? Well, I'm not sure. Pity, I suppose. 
He comes back from the almost dead, and all you can find is pity? You ought to say that for the unfortunate. You said he loved his wife. About the only thing he ever loved. And she's dead. Would you still call him lucky? Remember, there's to be no mention of Dottie. If he asks, be vague. No visitors until he's completely out of danger. The whole thing is like fiction. Only two hours after Joe took the treatment, his wife is killed, speeding to the place where the police found the body of Joe's partner. Oh, uh, Doctor, I think he moved. Uh, his eyes are opening. Remove the electrodes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't uh, try, Joe. No, not uh, yet. No, your speech will return in a couple of days. Now, just listen to me. If you understand me, blink your eyes once. Good. Uh, Joe, it worked out like I predicted. After two years, we learned how to correct your heart. You underwent surgery yesterday, and in a couple of weeks, you'll be out of bed. Uh, he's smiling. Joe, I want you to meet Miss Parker. Welcome home, Joe. Miss Parker's looked after you every day, and right now, she's going to bring in a real surprise. <laughs> I'll be back in just a moment. Now don't go away, Joe. Can you remember back to the night you came in here? Uh, uh, Joe, the same night you came in here, the police found a man who had been stabbed by a hoodlum and left for dead. There was no doubt he would die. The stab wound had entered his heart. Uh, but he was brought here, and I gave him the deep freeze treatment, too. Uh, it worked. And it kept death away for him just as it did for you, until we could find a way to save his life. A month ago... We perfected a new technique that enabled us to operate on his heart successfully. And now we've successfully corrected your heart condition. Uh, uh, now, Joel, naturally, this man has been very interested in your recovery since he shared the same experience. Uh, Miss Walker is bringing him in now. And Joel... Oh, here he is, Joel. Here's your surprise. Hello, Joel. This is Rico. I've been waiting for you, Joe. I've been waiting two long years. Presented The Big Freeze, written by Saul Panitz and directed by Ted Bell. 